Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine brought to you by AACC and the Clinical Chemistry Trainee Council. View this and many more pearls as well as other free educational material at traineecouncil.org. Hello, my name is Dr. Dodd Adcock. I am currently the Chief Medical Officer and Senior Vice President of LabCorp Diagnostics. Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine on DOAX, Laboratory Methods for Assessing Anti-10A Direct Oral Anticoagulants. This program was created with Bob Gosselin from the Thrombosis and Hemostasis Center at the University of California, Davis Health System. This session is a joint effort between the American Association for Clinical Chemistry and the North American Specialized Coagulation Laboratory Association. I would like to review the definition of a number of terms that will be used in this and following presentations. Venous thromboembolism represents clots within veins, most commonly deep vein thrombosis, DVT, and pulmonary embolism, PE. Pharmacokinetics is drug concentration after administration, pharmacodynamics, the drug effect after drug administration, peak levels, the maximum drug concentration after drug administration, and trough levels, the drug level just before the next dose. Therapeutic range is the recommended target drug effect, usually either a concentration or test effect, such as the INR used when patients are on warfarin therapy. There are currently four FDA-approved anti-factor 10A DOACs, rivaroxaban, apixaban, edoxaban, and patrixaban. These are commonly called anti-10A drugs. While all of these DOACs are direct reversible inhibitors of free and bound activated factor 10, there is variability in other characteristics. Most importantly for laboratory considerations are the time to achieve peak levels and drug half-life. This table details the expected peak or Tmax concentrations based on prescribed dose for each indication for each anti-10A DOAC. These values and ranges do not account for any adjustment due to renal insufficiency. Note the wide variability both within and between DOACs for each indication. Additionally, note the use of percentiles, such as a range that represents the 10th to 90th percentile would indicate that 80% of the treated patients would have these expected drug levels. Conversely, one out of five treated patients would fall outside, either lower or higher than these expected ranges. This table details the expected trough concentrations based on prescribed dose for each indication for each anti 10 DOAC. These values and ranges do not account for any adjustment due to renal insufficiently. Similar to the previously described peak DOAC table, there is wide variability both within and between DOACs for each indication. As there are no therapeutic ranges provided by DOAC manufacturers, the term on therapy has been introduced, which represents the expected drug level from lowest trough to high peak drug concentrations based on observations of patients taking these drugs at prescribed doses. Note the wide range of expected drug levels and the variability between the different DOACs, as well as overlap between trough and peak concentrations. Based on clinical and laboratory literature, there are a number of presumptions that have been made regarding the laboratory assessment of anti-10A DOACs. Included is the notion that, number one, the prothrombin time can reliably assess anti-10A DOAC concentration Number two, a normal prothrombin time excludes significant anti-10A DOAC levels. Three, the use of heparin drug calibrated anti-10A tests to estimate anti-10A DOAC concentration or presence. And finally, that drug calibrated anti-10A tests are substantially equivalent to mass spectrometry measurements. This presentation We'll explore whether each and every one of these presumptions are true. This cartoon of the coagulation cascade demonstrates the various targets for anticoagulant agents and depicts the laboratory testing pathways and assay targets. The currency in the common pathway is a simple trick 
to remember those factors in this pathway and their order of reactions, 10, 5, 2, and 1. Factor 1 is also known as fibrinogen. Both direct 10A inhibitor anticoagulants and direct thrombin inhibitor anticoagulants can potentially cause prolongation of the PTT, PT, and RVVT as they inhibit factors within these pathways. Direct 10A inhibitors, however, will not affect the thrombin time, dilute thrombin time, or Ekron methods. This table represents on-therapy range for each anti-10A DOAC. The figures demonstrate the response of the two commonly used PT reagents in the U.S., recombiplastin 2G and Inovin, to various concentrations of DOAC-enriched normal plasma. The red line represents the upper limit of normal for the reagent instrument platform used. Note the drug concentration for each DOAC that intercepts the upper limit of normal. These data suggest the unreliability of the PT to adequately rule out drug presence or to estimate levels. This cartoon represents the chromogenic anti-10A test that is commonly used in the U.S. for measuring unfractionated heparin, low molecular weight heparin, or the pentasaccharide, fondaparinox, anti-10A activity. With this method, excess activated factor 10 is added to, to the patient sample. The activated factor 10 is bound by the anti-10A drug, which can be either a heparin or an anti-10A DOAC, or both. The second step in this reaction is the addition of a specific substrate. This substrate is cleaved by residual activated factor 10, and this cleavage releases P-nitroanilin, which is yellow in color. The amount of yellow color is inversely proportional to anti-drug activity present. It should be emphasized that this method cannot differentiate between the anti-10A drug heparins or the anti-10A DOACs. And furthermore, there will be an additive effect in this assay if both drugs are present. Anti-10A assays may have added antithrombin, but this two-step method is not recommended when measuring DOAC concentrations, as it has been demonstrated to overestimate the concentration of DOAC in the sample. These figures represent data we generated from contrived DOAC samples and tested on two different anti-10A reagent platforms, the Stago liquid heparin assay, calibrated to low molecular weight heparin, and the Coamatic low molecular weight heparin assay. As you can see, there is a linear relationship between anti-10A DOAC and low molecular weight heparin calibrated anti-10A tests. These data would suggest a higher sensitivity to anti-10A DOACs than the PT as is shown in slide nine. However, this approach should only be used as an estimation of anti-10A DOAC concentration and such an estimation may be necessary in an emergency situation. Local verification of this testing capability is necessary. This table compares low concentrations of apixaban, rivaroxaban, and edoxaban to unfractionated heparin or low molecular weight heparin calibrated anti-10A assays from three different reagent manufacturers. Except for the noted edoxaban exception, these low anti-10A DOAC levels had measurable anti-10A activity, all well within the lower limit of quantitation of 0.05 units per ml. With the lower table representing the on-therapy range for the anti-10A DOACs, these data would suggest that heparin-calibrated anti-10A methods can reliably detect low levels of most anti-10A DOACs. These data demonstrate rivaroxaban on the left and apixaban on the right calibrated anti-10A activity assay as compared to mass spectrometry. The lower limit of quantitation for both methods was determined to be less than 10 nanograms per ml. This unpublished lower limit of quantitation data was derived from linearity studies, 
whereas the apixaban figure would suggest a higher, lower limit of quantitation. In summary, the pr prothrombin time has a highly variable, reagent-dependent response to DOAC. As such, it is not a reliable indicator of DOAC concentration. A normal PT does not exclude significant levels of anti 10 a DOAC, especially when using Inovin as the PT reagent. And for essentially all PT reagents in the presence of apixaban. It has been demonstrated that the unfractionated heparin and low molecular weight heparin calibrated anti 10 a assays can be used to estimate anti 10 a DOAC concentration and can potentially be used to exclude significant DOAC presence, with the doxaban being more reagent variable. This estimation of DOAC concentration or presence should be locally verified, emphasizing that these results are only an estimation of DOAC exposure. It has been demonstrated that DOAC calibrated anti 10 a tests are substantially equivalent to mass spectrometry. Thank you for your attendance in this session. For more like this, as well as articles, podcasts, and more, please visit the Trainee Council at traineecouncil.org.